How's it everyone? Welcome to another racket review right here on Open Court. I'm Kent and today I'm testing the newest addition to the Boom lineup. This is the 2024 Head Auxetic 2.0 Boom MP. Let's check it out. So before we get into this review, I wanna give a quick shout out to On Point Sports as I usually do. They let me demo this racket and they have a huge selection of tennis and pickleball gear, strings, rackets, you name it. So if you guys are ever in Oahu, check out On Point Sports for all your tennis related needs. Okay, so the Boom MP. I was a huge fan of the previous editions Boom Pro. In fact, I actually bought that racket and I've been using it here and there. It's one of my favorite rackets up there with the Speed Pro. And to be honest, I didn't really think Head needed to introduce another racket to their already oversaturated lineup of rackets. They have way too many lines in my opinion, but I'm not gonna complain about the boom. I really like that addition, and I think it differentiates itself enough to warrant its existence. I reviewed the MP alongside the previous boom. In fact, that was one of my very first videos on this channel. And today I have the MP, but I do want to review the Boom Pro for you guys because that is the one that I'm really looking forward to. So that's the one I'm going to dive more into detail about the technologies and stuff that 2024 has incorporated into this racket. But the only thing you guys really need to know for now is that this is the Auxetic 2.0. So the previous edition included Auxetic here in the yoke area, and now it has also expanded down here into the end of the handle for better consistent feedback and feel. The more interesting thing about this racket is the specs. So let's take a look at those. Here they are. It's a 100 square inch, 16 by 19 pattern. It's a 295 gram unstrung weight, 10.4 ounces. That's actually the same static weight as the Head Liquid Metal Radical MP, which was the racket I used in high school. And I love that racket. But that was a 98 1820. This is 116 19. So this is going to have a lot more power and a lot higher of a trajectory. This racket is, I don't typically use that kind of MP tweener frame, 100 square inch, 300 gram rackets like a pure drive. But I do love those types of rackets on serve and volley. And since I am a serve and volleyer, I am anticipating this racket is going to do good things for my game. But I typically like something like the Speed Pro that helps my ground stroke game because that's the area that I'm not so confident in. But enough blabbing, I'm excited to get the MP out on the court. But before we do that, make sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button if you guys like this content to keep the reviews coming. Let's get on the court and let's test out the Auxetic 2.0 Boom MP. So first, let's start with the pros of the new Boom MP. To be honest, I don't usually use rackets in this spec range, but one thing I found was that because this racket was so light at 295 grams, it was super easy to swing. This racket was very forgiving in terms of power, spin, and ease of use. This racket is not taxing to use over long matches and I didn't feel fatigued from long rallies. Usually, if I use a heavy racket, my shots lose some pace in long rallies or long games. I remember when testing the Yonex E-Zone Tour last year, if my service game ever went to deuce, I would be so tired that it became difficult for me to hold. This wasn't the case with the Boom MP as I never felt like my service form would slow down. The serve and forehand were the best parts of this playtest. Let's start with the serves. The flat serve was so easy to hit and I could clear the net without much issue. Usually, lighter rackets don't produce much power because of the lack of weight in the head, but that applies more towards ground strokes. This is because you really have to fight the momentum of your opponent's shot and redirect that pace. On the serve, you're hitting a static ball in the air, so a light racket can still produce decent pace because of the racket head acceleration. I was able to use my serve to dictate the point right off the bat. The kick serve didn't work quite as much for me because the Boom MP isn't a great spin racket, more on that later. The slice was fine because I could hit good pace with decent sliding action. My serve wasn't moving much in midair, but the pace was enough to force return errors. The power level is where the Boom MP really shined. I just mentioned the serve, but my forehand was winning points at a high clip. Interestingly, I usually struggle to hit for power and keep in the lines with an open pattern racket, but this playtest was a different story. Head recommends the Lynx Touch for this racket and that is exactly what I tested it with. I will admit, the string had a lot to do with my opinions on this racket. 
But this is why I said in a prior video that strings are more important than the racket. I tried playing my usual playstyle of serve and volley coupled with heavy topspin forehands. This wasn't working for me, but when I changed to a flat hitting style from behind the baseline, my results shifted drastically. The power was unreal at times. The Boom MP has decent stability for a sub 300 gram racket because the sweet spot is so big. The 100 square inches and really open 1619 pattern contribute to the generous sweet spot. I was hitting winners from behind the baseline that I didn't know I could hit. This would never happen with my other tighter pattern rackets. The power level should assist those with slower swing speeds or more compact strokes. Speaking of compact strokes, I have a small swing on my returns because I like to step in and redirect my opponent's pace. This was super easy and the Boom MP complemented my return style well. I did have to be a little careful not to make contact with an open face though as those shots flew to the back fence. But as long as I made contact in front, the racket did the rest. The racket was a bit light at times though and I ended up making contact too early since I'm used to heavier frames. But the Boom MP added some much needed power to my backhands and I was able to pressure my opponents from both wings. The Boom MP was also an easy racket to volley with because it was so light and maneuverable. The large sweet spot lets me hit volleys that pack a decent punch. This racket is super easy to get into position to hit precision volleys as well and I could hit drop shots and angles like my usual racket. If the opponent ripped the ball straight at me, I could get the racket into position fast enough to hit a decent shot, although I did have some stability issues at net. But poaching was also seamless because I could get the racket above my shoulders quickly to hit down on the ball. I struggled at poaching with the Ezo 98 Tour I tested last year because I couldn't bring the racket high enough to hit down on high shots quickly. I had zero issues with the Boom MP in this department. So I was pleasantly surprised with the Boom MP as this racket isn't in my spec range but I experienced some issues that I'd like to touch on now. So let's talk about some cons with the 2024 Boom MP. The biggest con for me is the weight. It is way too light for me. This racket is clearly meant for more intermediate level players or for those who have slower swings and want help with power. I overswung so many times with the Boom MP because I'm an aggressive player. This caused me to frame the ball much more often than my customized Boom Pro for example. The lightweight also makes this racket a bit unstable. This isn't as big an issue as some other lighter rackets because the sweet spot is wide and the open string pattern provides decent pocketing even on off center hits, but it does get pushed around a bit when returning big serves. Also, although the Boom MP is maneuverable at net, the lack of stability meant shots hit outside the sweet spot would usually result in me hitting sitters. The open pattern and lightweight also affected me on defense. Although the lightweight allowed me to get the racket into position for defensive shots easily, it just doesn't have the stability to hit effective defensive shots. I struggled to get reset shots, slices, lobs, and running ground strokes deep. If I couldn't get my weight behind a defensive shot, that shot would usually fall short into the net. Speaking of slices, the open pattern and lightweight made it difficult for me to hit low gliding slices. Most of my offensive slices floated high because the lightweight made my form a bit erratic and I would sail slices all over the place. The Boom MP just doesn't provide enough plow through for hitting slices that land deep and stay low. Also, this might just be a strings issue, but I felt the Boom MP was a bit too muted for me. I own the previous generation Boom Pro and even that feels a bit too dampened for my taste. The recent trend with racket manufacturers is to make their rackets more dampened to decrease the risk of injury. But I miss the responses of the older generation head rackets like the Liquid Metal and Graphene XT series. Those rackets made me feel connected to every shot as I had a good feel of where on the strings I was making contact and I knew exactly where my shot would land. For those who want a more crisp feel, the Lynx Touch may not be the best string for the Boom MP, but if you're trying to protect your arm, this racket is fairly comfortable. Lastly, this racket is not a spin monster by any means. It doesn't have any built-in spin technology like the Extreme line, but with that said, the number one contributing factor to spin generation is the player's form, so if you have good technique, you'll be fine. If you don't, the Boom MP will not really help you generate any extra rotation. Case in point, my kick serves didn't really have much movement, which was a disappointment coming from such a light racket. So, who is the head Auxetic 2.0 Boom MP4? It's for players with slow to medium swing speeds who want some help with power and want something forgiving to play with. This racket is a little too light for my aggressive style. Also, the lack of spin potential does bother me a bit, but that can be fixed with a different string, so that's not a knock against the racket. 
I usually like 100 square inch rackets for my serve and volley game, but I actually found more success with hitting flat from behind the baseline, which is unusual. Again, this is most likely a result of the Lynx Touch string. I knew from the start that the MP version of the boom wasn't going to win me over just looking at the specs, but I am excited to try the Pro because I liked the previous version enough to actually buy it. So, what do you guys think of the boom line? What do you think the boom does that other rackets in the head lineup do not? Let me know in the comments and as soon as I can get my hands on a demo of the Pro, I'll have a review for you guys. Thank you for watching this review of the 2024 Head Boom MP right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on an open court.